What is going on, guys? What's going on? It's your favorite mortgage lender, Abdel Kwame. So what is happening with interest rates? What's going to be the expectations this week? I shot a video earlier today, really diving deep in regards to the market, what we're anticipating heading into uh, next week. I did a lot, a lot of videos last week, actually. We were away at our president's cabinet, which was awesome. Now we're kind of diving in deeper, getting into the realm of things. So let's do a quick recap in regards to what we currently saw in reference to the market and really take a deep dive. So we got a little bit of an update in terms of the PCE report, personal consumption expenditures report. This is also known as a Fed deflator. We really wanted to truly see exactly what was happening when we talk about inflation and when we talked about employment. And where it came in, inflation came in right at the expectations, anywhere from 2.7 to 2.8 percent, which is great. Now, the core PCE, this is what we really look for. It rose about 0.3%, okay? Now, again, we want to kind of hit that 2% mark that the Fed is constantly telling us that we want to target. So we're kind of going back and forth a little bit. We know that the Fed is meeting later on this week. So we're going to try to see a little bit of a glimpse in regards to, are they going to potentially give us some insight in regards to, is there still potential cuts that we're expecting? Are there still going to be some ideas? Remember, interest rates jumped 11 times. 22 to currently and for the last few months we have been pausing so the fed is kind of tiptoeing in regards to how they need to tackle inflation and the major thing that we're going to see is where is the labor market going to be taking us are we going to start seeing a little bit of a turnover maybe in high employment and of course what is this week the employment data week we really want to kind of see exactly what is currently happening when we talk about unemployment job openings labor turnovers private payroll with adp the BLS report, the Bureau of Labor Statistics, which has been a little wacky over the last couple months, which has caused interest rates to simultaneously skyrocket, right? Now, we're looking at new home sales again. This is where it kind of throws things off. Of course, the media is has its own little agenda when we talk about what is currently happening uh, with the market. Now, when we look at new home sales, we're definitely seeing a higher uptick. What does that basically mean? When we're seeing a higher uptick, we're going to start seeing more inventory start to come on the market. Now, we are heading into spring and summer of this year. With spring and summer of this year, obviously, basically now, I mean, it was beautiful today, 80 degrees. I'm shooting this video outside, right? We're starting to see a little bit of an uptick. So month over month, we're up 8.8%, and year over year, we're up 8.3%. That's great. That goes to show you that inventory is starting to slightly increase. We're starting to see a little bit more of an added month supply of what we really need to see. You know, home values are going to continue remaining sticky. So we want to certainly make sure exactly what it is or certain parameters that we need to target and take it from there. Now, when we talk about pending home sales, again, we're seeing a little bit of an uptick compared to last year, right? A little over 78.2. Now, if we continue on this momentum, it's going to be the highest level that it's been in 13 months. You know, the last year of 2022, obviously, threw a little bit of turmoil in regards to you know, the market and interest rates kind of weeding, you know, into the sevens. And then at one point it touched in the eights around October of last year. So you really got to kind of see exactly what those measure, what those roofs are, and then take it from that. Right. So again, the bottom line is although pending home sales are hitting the highest level in a year, that's good. That means that home sales are starting to come on the market. We're seeing a lot more inventory start to come on. Builder sentiment at the same time is starting to increase, which is allowing us the ability simultaneously to truly take things into perspective. Now, the GDP report, this came out. I really didn't know how the market was going to react to it, to be frank. Um, but we saw that GDP only increased by, I think it was about 1.6%, right? The main factor within that was though economic growth was slow, inflation was still remaining super, super high. And that's kind of the tricky part that we want to make sure if inflation is remaining super, super high, what is going to be the sell off in regards to that? OK, so if inflation remains sticky and employment simultaneously is just not moving, what is going to be the necessary turnoff that we're going to do? Right. What is it that it takes? Now, we know that on Wednesday, the Fed is going to tell us exactly what they're planning on doing with their balance sheet. OK, now the balance sheet, what that basically means is they bought a lot of treasuries, a lot of mortgage best securities, a lot of treasuries, a lot of mortgage best securities. They're slowly having it withered away. Now they could potentially have some money in order to go back and invest back into the market as they buy more treasuries and as they buy more mortgage bonds. That's going to allow interest rates to go down because now it's going to be a little bit more appealing for investors to also take part. Now, again, talking about employment now, jobless claims did go a little bit on the lower end, hitting a nine week low. Now, the one thing we want to keep an eye out for, although initial jobless claims are low, 
people are still having a hard time continuing to get a job. So continuing jobless claims is trending almost the nearest hottest levels in recent years. Okay. Which should goes to show us again that people are having a very, very difficult time simultaneously being able to go after they collect unemployment and find a job. There's just not that many jobs out there as we know. And speaking of that, again, this week is going to be the heavy labor sector week, also known as the employment data week, as I always say. We're going to get tomorrow, we're going to get updates also in regards to home value appreciations. How have homes been going month over month and year over year? I confidently know I'm seeing it every single day. You can't even touch a property now if you're not going 5, 6, 10% over asking. So that's important for us to keep an eye out for exactly what it is. That's going to be case you learn the FHFA, the difference between the two. One measures cash transactions, one measures finance transactions. So we're going to kind of see exactly what the level of appreciation is. Our value of homes still continuing to go up, even after the massive almost 52% increase that we have seen. Now, we're going to also see in terms of job openings and labor turnovers, also known as the JOLTS report. And then we'll get private payroll, which is essentially the ADP report. And that's going to give us an idea in regards to where not only new employment are, but where's the wage growth? Is it keeping up at the same time with inflation? Because that's critical. If the cost of things go up, but then the wages are not kind of going at least congruent with it, That means you can't buy anything. You can't afford anything. So that's critical for us to monitor. And then, of course, on Friday, the most important report is going to be the non-form payroll and the employment rate. What is the BLS report going to come out? For the last few months, this has caused a little bit of a turmoil in regards to the market. So we really want to kind of see exactly where the Fed goes in there. And then they are going to meet on Tuesday and we'll get the results on Wednesday. Are they going to come out and truly give us some insight in regards to the cuts, right? They came out probably prematurely in December and told us they were going to cut three times. Then last time, last meeting that we had last month, they came out and they only said two. I'm reading a lot of different data readings that are kind of showing that there may only be potentially one. What is it going to take in order for these interest rates to simultaneously start to continuously go down? Because I'll be honest with you guys, a lot of clients are still buying. We have a few closing this month. This was actually one of our best months. Uh, ever, actually. And it has gone ahead and showed you exactly the resilience in regards to not only the market, but also the consumer's appetite for risk. A lot more consumers are willing to essentially stick, not give too much dive effort in regards to interest rates and really just get a firm understanding in regards to what are the best options for them and then truly take it from there. Okay. So I hope this provides some insight. I know it's been a little while since I came on and wasn't able to go on we were away. But I want to kind of give us a little bit of an insight in regards to where interest rates are headed. Are we expecting mortgage bonds to improve as they improve? Interest rates will simultaneously improve and then we'll start seeing a little bit more competitive interest rates. Okay. So any questions that you guys have, as always, feel free to like, comment, subscribe, wherever it is that you guys are watching these channels and we'll be able to take it from there. Thanks, guys. I'll talk to you guys later.